Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Match of the Gathering Market Watch. It's that time of the week again to count down the 10 hottest cards of the week. And again, you're going to see new commander builds coming out of Innistrad Crimson Vow, pushing some card prices again. But this week, it's not really about vampires, it's more about spirits. On top of that, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is coming next year. Packaging, promotional material, and maybe even a few cards began to leak out this week. And those leaks did influence some card prices as well. In today's video, I'm not going to show you card leaks or any packaging leaks. I will refer to them at times, but I don't want to spoil anything in full detail to the people that are waiting for the real previews. But if I mention something and you're interested, definitely check out MTG Reddit. There's a lot of places where you can find the information. Quickly before we get into it all though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pick up Innistrad Crimson Vow products there, as well as a number of other things on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated, so thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Number 10 is Oathkeeper Takino's Die Show. This is up $1.23 to $5.60. That is a 28% increase. And this is a good time to let you know how we compile our top 10 every week. We look at two major pieces of criteria. The first is a percentage increase in the value of the cards. Secondly, we want to see a true increase in sales out there as well. If there's a card you're thinking might be here and it doesn't show up in the top 10, well, then it fell short in one or both of those categories this week. With that out of the way, let's talk more about the card on the screen. Like I alluded to during the intro of the video, there were some leaked images that came from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty this week. So we did see a poster with a character that looked like a samurai. There's also an Ultra Pro playmat that's coming out that had characters that look like samurais as well. So once those leaks happened, discussions broke out on Commander and MTG Finance message boards, and some cards started to move. This is one of them. Not the only card moving because of the samurai tie-in today either. Additionally, we found out that the Commander decks are going to be called Buckle Up and Upgrades Unleashed. There is speculation that we might see Samurais on motorcycles in the Buckle Up Commander deck. That's based on the image that was on the front of the Collector Booster packaging, which we saw this week too. Beyond that, the bundle packaging was also leaked, and that did show the Wanderer on the front. Number 9 is Curiosity Crafter. This is up $1.29 to $3. That is a 75% increase. This is seeing more Commander play now because of Innistrad Crimson Vow. It is a good upgrade to Spirit Squadron, and it is also seeing play in fresh Commander builds around Millicent Restless Revenant. To a lesser degree, this is also showing up in other new Commander decks too, like Toxro the Corrosive and Giralf Visionary Stitcher. Number 8 is Guild Pact Informant. This goes up $1.91 to $2.97. That is a 180% increase. This is also getting increased Commander play in Toxro builds. Number 7, Perplexing Test. This is up $2.08 this week to $4.97. That is a 72% increase. Here's another good upgrade to Spirit Squadron, and again, many players are putting this in fresh builds around Millicent. Plus, it is another card that can show up in Giralf Visionary Stitcher Commander decks, too. Number 6, Hunted Phantasm. This is up 282 this week to 799. That is a 55% increase. And you guessed it, this one's moving because it is seeing more Commander play now in Toxro builds. Number 5 is Esau Enlightened Bushi. This goes up 284 to 499 for a 132% increase. This currently does see a little commander play, even as a commander occasionally, but the reason it's moving now, of course, is because of the samurai speculation based on the images we discussed earlier. Number four is Ebon Dragon from Portal. It goes up 341 this week to 795. That is a 75% increase. So the Portal copy of this card dried up online this week. It is hard to find in good condition. You've heard this story before. It only sees very limited commander play, so I do think this may be a buyout. Now, the card has been reprinted once in From the Vault Dragons, but that product had a unique foiling process that not everybody liked. Number three, Opali Condes Yojimbo. This is up $11 to $16.97. That is a 184% increase. Currently, this is found in some commander builds like Takino Samurai General, but now it is moving, of course, because of the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty leaks. We talked about the reason Samurais are moving in general earlier, but there is another reason this could be going up as well. There were a few cards leaked, but they were not at all confirmed. They may very well be fake. 
One of the cards could play well with this, though, assuming it's real. It's called Kaodai Soul of Kamigawa, and like I said earlier, since it is an unconfirmed leak, I don't want to spoil anything more here, but if you are interested, it is on the MTG subreddit. Number two is our big percentage mover of the week. It is March of Souls. It goes up 1255 this week to 1454, a whopping 642% increase. This is another card that is a good upgrade to Spirit Squadron. It's also in fresh Millicent builds. This one is yet to be reprinted, and of course, Plane Shift is a pretty old set, so it is difficult to find these online in good condition. And number one is Ritual of the Machine. It goes up 1408 this week to 2499. That is a 129% increase. Now, this does see a little commander play, and I have seen this in the occasional Runo Stromkirk slash Krothus Lord of the Deep deck even, but I think the main reason it's moving the way it is right now is because of its status on the reserve list. It does feel like a targeted reserve list buyout to me. This is a pretty big jump. All right, with that being said, that does it for our top 10 hot cards of the week. Remember to join us this weekend for our regular episode of The Market Watch, where we deep dive into everything that's happening in the secondary market. That will be our last episode of the weekend show until after the holidays. Until next time, though, hey, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.